step-by-step -step pump fluke lessons. I'm Stefan Stancho, and now we're going to talk about jumpings. Jumpings from tube to another. What's the most efficient way? But first, let's talk a little bit of markings. Our aim is to know our pump fluke so well that you don't need to look where to blow. But before that, it might be good to have some markings to learn and so that you are not panicking when you are not sure which tube to blow. As a child, my first pump flute had markings with beeswax in C, F sharp, C, F sharp and so on. So when I played, I just played something and if I wasn't sure to which tube I go, I just a little bit tilted my palm flute and saw the bees wax and it was easier to blow. Well, after a couple of years, I changed so that I put the markings on this side. It's the same C, F sharp, C, F sharp. Many people use also C, G, C, G. It doesn't matter which one because between C and F sharp is two tubes and between F sharp and C is three tubes. And if you choose to mark C, G, C, G, you have that mirror of this. So three tubes and two, three tubes and two. I have had this pump fluid for more than 25 years and all the other marks has dropped, but still this one F sharp is there. It's good to be there. This old fellow here is also more than 25 years old. As a child, I put with a marker pen to the C's and the F sharps. And we can see that there are still a couple of markings left. They have been engraved here. I also have a brand new pound flute made by Chai Shui Chen, a Taiwanese flutist who is very, very talented. This time, I will choose to put the markings inside the tubes so for with a marker pen, I will put a tiny dot to C and to F sharp with different colors. So when I get panicked and I don't know where am I, ooh, it's easy to find. But our aim is to know our pamphlet as good as our own shoes. So when you need to find a certain tube and play it, you have to know it by heart where you can find it. A. Down A, F sharp, B, upper D, G, C, okay. So, we have to train. And how? Let's see. It doesn't matter whether you are a beginner or a professional or something in between. We all must train jumpings. So let's start with this little Exercise. From G, we go to A. Back to G, B. Back to G, C. Back to G, D. We played a fifth from G to D. And for a beginner, that's really good and really enough for the beginning. As days go by, you can choose to make the same exercise but to choose another tube where to start from. So, the first was with G, and now I'm playing pretty fast, so just listen. Then from A, B, C, D, E, and so on. And after a while, weeks go by, even months, you might want to add some more tubes, for instance, until octave. But remember, before doing this, you might want to try also the fifths backwards, because everything that you train, you could try it backwards. So, the first training was Now start from the D and go back.
E. And so on. Try it. For more advanced pump flutists, you might want to try the difference between legato and staccato while jumping. And you can see that it's way easier to jump with staccato than legato. But legato means that you have to be quick and smooth. With staccato you have plenty of time to find the next tube. Let's not forget the ground level. So if you have just started to play the palm flute, you should just play from tube to another without jumping first. You could try the and going back. And the next level from here would be just a tiny jumps, one forward, one back, and so on. So from G, B, A, C, B, D, and so on. G to the octave higher G. And you can add to this practice some different kind of tonings. For instance, staccatos, for instance, four staccatos and changing the tube. And so on. Or Try a little bit legato, for instance, with two notes legato. Unfortunately, many times palm flutists, when they have a big leap, they tend to rush and be stiff. So let's say we have from A to A an octave jump and we have to go smoothly. You have to be relaxed and already thinking when playing the first tube, where are you heading to? Let the hands and wrists and a little bit of head do the work for you and be relaxed. So do not be stiff or rush. Do not do like this. Just relax and let's go. some samples from my book so that you know in practice how to deal with jumpings. Sorry for interrupting the lesson. I just wanted to say that we are going to make a new extra video after this one still with jumpings, some exercises that you can train with us or for instance with your friend. You can see in the info box a link and in, by going to that link, you can download the PDF and you can play, for instance, with your friend and make good exercises and learn how to make jumpings. Jump, jump, jump! Jumping grasshoppers is the first example. 
and we are going to play a total of five different samples and all of them are about jumpings. So let's go. Train the same pieces as we play, train in your own tempo. Don't necessarily choose our tempo, our tempo might be too fast for you for now. Rally champion! And after this one, we're gonna play your slower version. As a sample of a more demanding exercise, I'm going to play only a couple of rows from a full page etude. This is called E and it's from Alphabet Etudes. Hi there, 
I'm Stefan from the future and I came to tell you that in my book every exercise, duo or melody they all have chords. So as long as for instance your friends know how to read chords they can accompany you. So it doesn't matter actually whether it's a piano or guitar, it could be for instance another palm flute. So I'm going to now to accompany Stefan when he arrives and I'm going to just uh, improvise on the chords, what I see. So, actually, Stefan can't see me and can't hear me because of my special glasses. So, we'll see what happens. Hey, oh, no, he comes. And now, from the same series of etudes, alphabet etude A. And this is without repetition. <laughs> A tiny sample from tenor etudes. This series of ten exercises are named by different numbers. And this one is seven and it's called Shu. And Shu means seven in Swedish. Etude number one from the total series of 50 different exercises. Always remember that when I started to play a new song, a new melody, a new exercise, just remember to play way, way slower than you will be ending up in the final. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us to this video and watching it. And Thanks. we hope to see you also in the next lesson. So tune in and cheers! Thank you.